do you have a box of old photos lying around? Or are you like my dad, who stuffed all of our family photos into a suitcase that we never unpacked when we finished moving six years ago? However you store your memories, this is your sign to digitize them. Physical media is wonderful, but it's ephemeral. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. But we're not going to let it get to that. Because I'm going to show you two easy ways to digitize your memories that will not only preserve your family photos, but will also make them infinitely more accessible and shareable. And the best part is, you can do it for free. Here's what you'll need. A smartphone or a flatbed scanner. I'll be using the Epson V600 and a Google Photos account. Let's start with the easiest and freest method. Get out your smartphone and download the free photo scan app by Google, and you're already halfway there. Open the app, place the photo you want to scan on a flat, contrasty background, position it within the frame in the app, make sure you aren't tilting your phone, then press this button to take the picture, which will prompt you to move the camera and line up this white circle over four white dots. And you have just digitized your first photograph. Congratulations. From here, you can review your scan, rotate it, and adjust the corners as you see fit. I like PhotoScan because it's simple. It uses the camera's flash so you don't need any special lighting setups, and it helps remove glare and shadows from your scans. That being said, you should still take out your images from glass frames or album sleeves for the cleanest results, and you don't want to scan in an area that's too bright or too dark. Remember that this is just a fancy way of taking a picture of a picture, so even though it's being lit by your camera's flash, the ambient light can still show up in your scans, so keep that in mind. Once you've finished scanning, you can head over to the Google Photos app, where I'd recommend setting up a dedicated account just for your family photos. It'll be easier to keep things organized, and you don't have to worry about mixing up your personal photos with your scans. You get 15 gigabytes free, which should be more than enough storage. You'll see all of your scans in the photo tab where you can long press to select multiple images and add them to an album. Organizing your photos and albums makes it a lot easier to find specific images or moments later on, which makes your work far more useful in the end. Your albums can be found here in the Library tab. You can share an album by creating a shareable link, which can be set to allow people to collaborate and add images, or just view the photos you share with them. It's worth mentioning that there are many alternatives to Google Photos that work just as well, but this is what I personally use, and it's worked well for me over the years. I also like the fact that you can order prints right through the Google Photos app. But speaking of prints, depending on the quality of your phone's camera, smartphone scanning might not work for you. Most phones have crazy good cameras these days, but if yours doesn't, or if you really want higher resolution, more color accurate scans that you can print at larger sizes without losing image quality, you probably want to go for the second, not so free method. For that, you're going to need a flatbed scanner, like this Epson V600. This scanner goes for $350 new, but you can usually find it used for much cheaper. It is expensive for what it is, but it allows you to scan film as well as photos and documents. This is the setup I personally used during my freshman year of college when my dad offered me $500 to digitize everything in this suitcase. I thought I was committing highway robbery until I realized that he's kept over 2,000 photographs, hundreds that he personally shot, in addition to the hundreds sent to us from family from across the world. It took me four months and countless hours to scan and organize what I thought was everything. To this day, I'm still adding to our archives. Every year I find another image that I missed or that I've never seen before. These days, it's a labor of love. I don't need to be paid because I've seen how important this work is. Trust me, nothing compares to showing your folks images they haven't seen in ages and watching their eyes light up as they ask you to help them share it on Facebook and hearing stories you've never heard before about people you didn't know existed. If you've got young ones or rambunctious teens, this is a good summer project for them. I learned a lot about my family this way. But be ready though, they'll be asking you a lot of questions. But I digress. Your scanner should come with free scanning software. In my case, it's Epson Scan 2. Once that's installed, you can get to work. It's pretty straightforward from here, and I don't want this to become a V600 specific tutorial, so I'll give you more general tips that I've picked up over the years. Regardless of the scanner you're using, you should be able to change settings like bit depth and resolution. I'm no expert here, so here's my simpleton's way of thinking about it. The higher the number, the more information you're capturing, up until a certain point. Higher bit depth means you're capturing more colors. Higher resolution means you're capturing more details. However, this does not mean that you should set it to the max your scanner can go. For most people, 24-bit color is more than enough unless you're planning on editing your scans. Every scanner has a point at which upping the resolution will yield little to no visible difference. 
And the higher you set these settings, the larger your files will become, and the longer it will take you to scan images. So you need to strike a balance by asking yourself what it is you plan on doing with these scans. 300 dpi is good enough to print, so I wouldn't go any lower than that. But because I wanted my family to be able to print any image at larger sizes, I personally chose to scan our photos at 1200 dpi. Overkill? Kind of. But that leads me to my next point. The more time, effort, and attention to detail you put in during this admittedly boring process, the less time you have to spend later rescanning and organizing images. When you're dealing with a lot of anything, you have to stay on top of things as you go, otherwise it'll pile up and you'll put this project on the back burner indefinitely. It happened to me a few times. So create a system and a routine for yourself. Block out a certain time to scan photos and set a quota. And most importantly, create a file naming structure for yourself that will help you keep things organized and will help you quickly find images later on. Here's how I do it. I first set my scans to export in a folder titled Family Photo Scans. I make subfolders when I scan a particular group of images or a specific photo album. Then before I scan, I create a file name that will be applied to the scans based on an overarching theme of the photos. It could be an event, a person, a time period pictured, something that identifies the set and makes it easy to search for. Take this for example. This is me at Niagara Falls sometime in 2007 or so. I would name this along with any other photos from that vacation, Canada Trip 2007. And because Epson Scan allows me to, I attach four numbers to the end of each file starting at 0001, based on the sequential order in which the images were scanned. This ensures you don't have files with the same name, and it gives each file a unique identifier that helps me keep things straight. Find something that works for you, though. Once that's done, you can finally get to scanning. Place your photos on the flatbed as straight as you can, preview what the scanner sees, adjust as necessary. Some scanners can make selections for you, otherwise you just click and drag to select what you want to be scanned. Press scan, and that's it. Keep scanning and upload to organized albums and Google Photos, and you'll be done in no time. It might be useful to have a can of compressed air or one of these manual dust blowers to clear off your photos or remove any debris from the glass. Some scanners have digital dust removal you can apply, but I personally haven't had good results using it with my setup, so I have to clean up my photos in Adobe Lightroom. Like I said before, the more time and effort you put in now, the less work you have to do later. This is especially true when it comes to scanning film. It's beyond the scope of this video, but you might encounter some negatives mixed in with your printed family photos. I'll cover that process in a separate video for time's sake. Honestly though, if you don't have to scan film, owning a scanner like the V600 doesn't make much sense. A decent chunk of the cost comes from the fact that it can scan both documents and film. So if you're only looking to scan prints, I'd either try smartphone scanning or find a cheaper scanner that isn't designed to scan negatives. It'll be far cheaper for you. That being said, I'll leave you with a comparison of the same images scanned with my phone and my scanner. I'm using a Google Pixel 7a, so your results will vary depending on what phone you have. But I hope this video helps you decide what method is right for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you sticking around. Like and subscribe for more. If you've made it to the end, I suppose I should mention the other way you could do this. There are countless services you can ship your photos to, and they'll scan them and send them back. I don't know how much it costs, and I don't really know what their quality is like, so I can't recommend any of them, but if you don't have the time, that might be the option for you. If that's the case, I totally just wasted your time. Sorry.